Hello, book people. PT here. Today I've got a couple of exciting guests, a couple of heavyweights from the author world here uh, with me. We've got uh, Michael Anderley and Justin Sloan. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Thanks Hello. for thanks for coming on. Um, so the reason that I wanted to have you folks both on is that you've got a new book out, both of you, that you just uh, just worked on called Shades of Light. And uh, so I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about uh, kind of a little bit broader, like, uh, so, so there's this this Age of Magic world, and even larger than that, Michael, you're the author of the Cathirian Gambit universe, which is even bigger. So I want to talk about uh, writing in shared worlds, and, and uh, Michael and I are working on a book for that that world as well. So uh, uh, it's been a very interesting process, I think, and I, and I was just, just wanted to kind of talk to you all a little bit about that. But first, tell us about about uh, Shades of Light a little bit, Justin or Michael, whoever wants to give us the rundown. Go, Justin. Go, Justin. Go, Justin. (laughs) Sure. So the basic premise is, of course, it falls into this uh, larger Age of Magic, or uh, and and then it started with The Rise of Magic by, uh, of course, Michael, but also uh, C.M. Raymond and Lee Barbant. Uh, and yeah, so that one I won't go too much into detail on because maybe Michael can or they can come on the show later. But this one starts with the the premise that there's a bunch of paladins who believe magic is evil, and one of the paladins is one of the main characters, and his sister suddenly starts using magic. So he ends up on the run, kind of paladins hunting them down, uh, some evil sorcerer stuff that goes on as well, and they go off and search for the Sword of Light, which is this mystic sword of magic that they think can unite the lands and helps bring this all to an end this big war hidden war of magic they call it nice very cool uh yeah i've i've, I've read the book and it's it's great it's exciting stuff so huh. justin before before we get into talking a little bit more about uh the broader picture with michael i'm curious for you coming into this like you well you've written written with michael before so you've worked in this kind of collaborative environment before but what was it like coming into either now or or with your first uh, Reclaiming Honor series, what's it like coming into a world that's you know already developed a little bit? How do you put your own spin on it while still, you know, being true to to what made it cool in the first place? You just don't yeah. read the books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I think he he's making fun of me because I think I started like originally we we're like read all fourteen books, and for my pace of reading, that's like five years or twenty <laughs> years worth of reading. So I <laughs> I think I read like the first four before i started writing and then like kept trying to catch up as i was going you know right. uh, so it's been this that part's been complicated right because occasionally i have to ask questions that obviously uh i should know the answer to <laughs> you know, especially if i'm writing this stuff um uh, later as i'd come along I'd, I'd be able to read the parts and finally know where to reference and whatnot but the the big challenge has totally been more i feel about tone and voice than i than really the world building because michael can just correct me on the world building stuff you know that's that's easy enough ish as long as we catch it uh but with the tone and voice <laughs> as long as we catch it the tone and voice you know his his style is very much like team building uh you know like in the marines you get a team together and you're all like poking fun at each other and it's good times and, and when you're reading the books you kind of feel like you're part of that you know you're sitting along next to these guys and gals and you're like yeah good times fun um not everybody can do that right that's that's a challenge so i think what i did is i i tried to approach it where i was doing that but that wasn't the main crux but I tried to rely on some of my time in the in the Marines to pull on those moments when they could exist in the style of story that worked for me. Because if I try to write somebody else's story, it's just not going to happen, right? It's going to get bogged down. I'm going to think too much about it. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a failure probably. Gotcha. So you're saying I should go join the Marines so I can, I can work on my book? Everybody here should join the Marines so they <laughs> know how to write better stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have you. We have Craig was Marine. Um, we have a couple that are like uh, Army and Air Force or something. Yep. So, I mean, but Marines seem to be uh, abundantly um, represented in the Cuthurian Gambit. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, awesome. and it makes sense. And that's how some people originally pitched it to me. Is they're kind of like, it's a military-esque vampire series. And then it goes into space. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so I'm, I'm sure people who are maybe not familiar with the series is like, wait, I thought you were talking about magic. And now there's you're talking <laughs> vampires. So I don't, I don't know. Um, Michael, do you want to, or, or Justin, either one of you, just give a little bit of an overview of the whole Cathirian Gambit universe and what it's all about? All right, so the original book was Death Becomes Her, and the concept is that um, what we think we know about vampires and werewolves is wrong, very, very wrong. And the reason for that is that everything that related to our 
understanding is really based on alien technology called nanocytes. And this is something that the world right now is playing with, which are incredibly small and tiny machines, right? So um, that's the premise 12 to 1400 years ago, a, an alien crash landed here on Earth. And we are looking at it from a situation where it gave humans powers because those things drew, were driven from, um, <laughs> I just saw that uh, Justin jumped off, so <laughs> he'll, we'll, we'll get him back. Here yeah, he is. Here I think he's coming back. Uh, hey. That's all right. So anyway, long story short, um, everything is in the Cretherian Gambit is actually science-based, even including the Age of Magic, where what happened is the nanocytes kind of run amok, the programming messed up, and we are using Arthur C. Clarke's third law, which is uh, any, you know, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and we're using E equals MC squared, right? So we're using um, the fact that energy and matter are equivalent. So I'm sorry, I'm having a weird moment. I'm seeing Justin's picture <laughs> with you, and I'm like, freaking twins, man. <laughs> Just, so, Justin's the good looking one. <laughs> Yeah, I know. If you just had a hat on, it'd be like, you guys are <laughs> brothers. So just long, but, but from that, you really understand that there is the ability in science to produce magic if you had enough energy and the ability to manipulate it. Nice. Very cool. And I, it's a great description because I think that in a nutshell, along with what Justin said, I think is kind of what, in my experience at least, that people are really latching on to about your stuff is that you've got this this cool twist on vampires with that's very science-based, that's very... Uh, unique and interesting and then as justin said you're also bringing in the fun team building um uh, razzing each other having having uh cool adventures kind of stuff and those two joining together is i think people are really have, have obviously really responded to that um they have I, it speaking to justin's comment a little bit earlier justin's biggest challenge was the fact that he is a game of thrones fanatic right <laughs> so i am just about as far opposite of game of thrones as you can so Justin really will take 80 to 90% of a movie where everything is horrible for the protagonists and he'll be excited about the last 10 to 15% of the movie. And if I'm 15% into a book and it's still keeping me down, I'm like closing the book and moving on because I'm like, well, I'm not going to spend 80% of my book being stressed out. <laughs> so I think, would you agree, Justin? That's kind of like the biggest challenge. Yeah. So thinking about the, how you approach story structure in a way, I think, Chris and those guys asked me that when I was on the podcast at one point on their part-time writers podcast where, where it's like how much do you focus on like the traditional story structure which when you go to like these story meetings like Austin Film Festival they'll say story structure is you you take a guy have him climb a tree throw rocks at him have him get back down the tree uh, but I, I feel like that's not applicable to ours because we don't want to just throw rocks at the characters the whole time we want them to go up there and have fun adventures and Talk to squirrels and <laughs> throw rocks back. <laughs> throw rocks back, and then and then jump off the tree into a ninja loop roll that <laughs> comes out screaming with excitement. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, Michael, uh, you know, I'm sure there's on the one hand, it's, it's cool to have different writers writing in your world and the, in your universe and all that. But I'm I'm curious. Is it also a little bit? Uh, I don't know. For me, I, I would feel I, I I think it would be uh, at least at first it would be a little bit like. Uh, you, I'm sure you have to give up a little bit of control, you know, to, to have someone else bring in, bringing in their ideas into your world a little bit. Is, was that difficult for you at all or has it been, is it all fun? It's been a little bit difficult depending on the, the collaborator that we're speaking to, because some of them are very open and they are, um, if you will, they're just a blank slate. They're willing to kind of go with it. And so we always have some, some discussions related to story and where that's going. Others um, occasionally have very specific mindsets, and it's on me to try to say in a very nice voice, no, we can't do that. And that's not really my personality to be seeing no. So generally speaking, I try to figure out a way that allows them to have that opportunity within the rules that are created within the universe, of course. And um, sometimes that's easy, sometimes that's challenging. So, But at the end of the day, I do focus on the readers. So... If I believe that it's going to give a bad reader experience based on what we've done before, I don't really have a problem saying no. <laughs> right. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And 
and Justin gave me some good advice too when I was uh, we were starting working on our stuff uh, in your world where he said you know it, it, you might run across some stuff where it kind of goes against your instincts or is a little different than what you've done in the past but just just remember that Michael really knows what his readers like and uh, and and that's why if he if he's pointing in a direction uh, it's all based on because he knows that's what the readers are responding to so that was good advice good job Justin on that one yeah and it's funny too because you look at some of these reviews and I remember one review. Kind of like what we were talking about. It was like, hey, Michael's books are this, this, and this. The story structure, basically. Like, the team and the dynamics and the stuff. It's not about all this other stuff. And and that was, like, a big point for me where I was like, oh, I, like a, a light went off. You know, like, okay, I get it now. I see I see what they're talking about, kind of. Sometimes it takes that kick in the pants of a negative review to help you see it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys listen to too many negative reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think I'm getting I'm getting a little better at that, but I'm still I've got a ways to go still. Well, yeah. you're about to put out your first book, right? Yes. Yep. So you're gonna you're gonna catch it here in a little while too. I mean, <laughs> we're we're really ramping up the age of magic because the way that we've done it and the reason that we have so many people writing in the Cthulhuian Gambit is frankly my fans read really fast and they can't get enough. So in order to get them off my back and share the monkeys. Um, that's when we started asking additional collaborators into the areas. And then we set apart this one place called the Age of Magic, where everybody could kind of play a little bit of the sandpit, if you will, as well as the Age of Expansion, which is space opera. So that's the Star Wars area. And it allows us to grow those more efficiently and effectively and allow the fans to um, understand what's coming going on in those areas without having to read the first 16 books. So, you know, we've got two plus million words of content they don't have to read right and i think and i think you've done a good job and um and chris and lee have done a great job like i read i I think the order i read uh, i read your first two uh books and then i then i read restriction the first age of magic book and then i went back to to your books and i've been kind of going back and forth but it uh you know i didn't feel like i was completely out of my depth at any time or you know it, it they've struck a good balance between you know building on what came before but also being welcoming to new readers so so to anybody out there who's like wanting to dive into the age of magic and you're like do i do i have to read 20 other books first no i don't i don't think you have to at all to get into no it. i think you can go ahead i was gonna say like you know i was reading justin's book on the airplane back home um i recently was in mexico so i'm reading it and I'm having a great time. I just pulled it. I started out because I was going to do editing, but Justin has done so many books that within the first, I don't know, Justin, maybe 20 pages, I just closed it up, opened up my iPad and said, I'm just reading now. And so I had a good time. My wife is like looking at me because I'm cracking up trying to keep, you know, I don't want to go into too many scenes, but it was the whole scene, Justin, whenever they first got to um, the outer group and the, uh, <clears throat> the one kind of, um, uh, militant woman who was throwing the arrows and she goes, stare. you know, yeah, a stare. And, and she's like, you know, so you go for the trees, not the valley and you go for the, you know, I could just, I, yeah. I was <laughs> rolling in my seat. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I'll spoil it a little bit. Not, not spoil, but for people who are wondering, he's a paladin. So he has this chaste thing going on. So she's ribbing him a little bit on that. You know, <laughs> a little, <people> kind of, <laughs> a lot. She was thinking it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Good times. What I was going to say is I think it'd be fun for, if there's like two friends out there who want to get into these series and check them out, it'd be awesome if one's a faster reader and could go and read everything and then come read like Shades of Light versus the other person just reads Shades of Light and then compare notes and kind of see like what your takeaway is from one book and not necessarily Shades of Light, like any of the books in these spinoffs. It'd be really cool to see how you interpret the book, you know, before reading or after reading. Right. Yeah, it was, it was kind of funny to, not to get too in deep to it, but after I read uh, Restriction, the first Age of Magic book, I was like, I, uh, I pinged... Uh, Chris, one of the authors, and I was like, oh, this is I'm really interested in the uh, the Age of Madness, too. Which book is that? And he's like, no, <laughs> no, that, that's all. we don't have that yet. So uh, Yeah, the Age of, the Age of Madness is, yeah. the, the easiest way to say it is it is very zombie-ish, and I'm, that's not my genre. I don't read zombies. I don't care to write zombies. And I'm like, how would you do a zombie book that's fun? So I, I just, I've stayed away from it, but I imagine it's going to happen eventually. Cool. Well, I'll let you guys go in a second, but Justin, before I do, do you want to give a quick pitch for your Reclaiming Honor series? Anything you want to uh, give, give the a quick high-level overview of that? Yeah, I think that series, I'm having a lot of fun with Book 5 right now, by the way. Oh, my God. 
I don't know. I don't know if you're if you're starting to like my style more, or if I'm starting to write more like your style. I don't know what it is, Michael, but somewhere I think it's I think it's starting to meld on this one because it's yeah that or people are gonna be like, who is this turd who just is like going all over the place? Because I'm just having fun with it. Anyway, the series is yeah, it's post apocalyptic vampire. It starts off with uh, Valerie. Her name is Valerie. She's kind of like a vampire princess in uh, old France, and the world went to an end about 150 years ago, and they're starting to rebuild, kind of. And so she's part of this bad vampire group. Uh, her brother leaves her for dead when she doesn't really do the bad things she's supposed to do. Uh, and then she decides that she's going to go to America and intercept his invasion because he's planning on moving over to America to take over, basically. Like, spread the vampireness. And yeah, so she's like, nope, this is not going to happen. Like, I can't allow this to happen. <laughs> awesome. Cool. And the first I book. Like it froze up right there. No, we, no I heard you fine. Damn it. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Justice is Calling is the first book in that, right? People want to check that out. Yeah, Justice is Calling is the first book in the series, and there's four of them out now, and there's he's working on the fifth. Sweet. So, sweet. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so if, if anybody wants to start getting into these, man, you've got a lot of places to start. You can start with Death Becomes Her. You can start with uh, start with Justice is Calling. Start with Restriction. If you want to start with, uh, with the Shades of Light, uh, the newest book. Hey, thank you guys so much for coming on. Uh, appreciate appreciate you taking the time. Thank, and, you. Uh, thank you. And thank you, viewers, for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah, thank you.